Now let's explore some of the more common types of microphones that you may have available to you. First up, you have large diaphragm dynamic microphones. Some examples of this would be the Shure SM7B, the Electro Voice RE20, the Audio Technica BP40. There are a ton of microphones in this category that are really popular for podcasting. Next up, we have more studio condenser microphones. Some examples here would be the Lewitt LCT440, Audio Technica AT2035, Rode NT1, Sennheiser MK4. There are a bunch of microphones in this category that are primarily geared towards music, but can work fantastically for spoken word. Next, you have the handheld mic, which can be either a dynamic or a condenser. Some popular options are the Shure SM58, Sennheiser E835, SE Electronics V7, Neumann KMS105. These are all stage mics. They're really good at rejecting background noise and can be a lot of fun to move around, give you a bit more freedom if you want that in your video. Another option that you have is a small diaphragm condenser or a shotgun microphone being used to overhead mic yourself. This is a great method if you don't want a microphone blocking your face and you don't want a microphone in frame to muddy up your storytelling. Then we have the ever popular lavalier or lapel microphone which clips directly to your clothing. This is another option if you don't want a microphone blocking your face but you're not too worried about a microphone being in frame and if you you want a little bit more freedom to move around without going off axis from the mic. And lastly, we have the headset microphone, which I think is a great no-brainer option for work calls, for voice calls, where you're not too concerned about the audio quality because it's just not going to sound as good as a full-sized mic. With all that information, now we need to address what type of microphone is going to fit your use case best. And this is going to come down to one primary question. How do you want to actually use your mic? What I mean by that is, do you want the microphone in frame or do you want the microphone out of frame? Do you want to close talk the microphone or have the microphone a little bit further away from your mouth? Or are you going to be moving around a lot while you're talking, streaming, podcasting or whatever? All of these questions are going to help us hone in on which microphone type is best for your use case. First up, if you're okay with the microphone being in frame and you're going to be close micing yourself, I would classify this as anywhere from 1 inch to 6 inches or approximately 16 centimeters. You can get by with a studio condenser, a studio dynamic, or even a handheld dynamic. All of these microphones will sound great in this situation. The pro here, you're going to get the best signal to background noise ratio, the signal being your voice, the background noise being the reverb, the ambient noise, any of the unwanted sound because the sound source is much closer to the mic. But there are also a number of cons to close micing. If you're doing video, the microphone is much more likely to cover your face. Because the mic is so close to your mouth, it will also pick up more of the mouth clickies and mouth noises. It will likely pick up more of your breathing. It's more likely to pick up plosives where you pop the microphone because there's no room for the air to disperse. And if the microphone is directly directional as you get closer it exhibits something called proximity effect that means the low end gets quite a bit louder and depending on the microphone the low end can get kind of overpowering now here are some examples of these different microphone types in this setup first up we have the studio condenser i am using the neumann hello neumann tlm 49 six inches from my mouth and here is how this sounds Next, I'm on a large diaphragm dynamic, the Shure SM7B, the EQ switches are in neutral. I'm three inches off of the end of this thing, and here is how this option sounds. And lastly, we have the handheld dynamic option, but this could easily be a handheld condenser. For this example, I'm using the SE Electronics V7, and here is how this option sounds in this situation. Secondly, if you're still okay with the microphone being in frame, but you want a bit more distance between yourself and the mic, I would classify this between 6 and 12 inches, or approximately 31 centimeters. I would recommend going for a condenser microphone, whether it be 
be a studio large diaphragm condenser, a small diaphragm condenser, or even a shotgun microphone. These are going to be more appropriate for use at a distance because they have a higher sensitivity compared to a passive dynamic. That means that they output a much louder signal, and if we're using a passive dynamic at a distance, you're going to start to run into issues with preamp noise and an underlying hiss in your recording. This is a worst case scenario for this demo. I am using the SM7B about 12 inches from my mouth, which nobody should do. I am somewhat of a loud talker and I still had to max out my preamp at plus 65 decibels of gain. If I was more of a reasonable talker and I spoke at a normal level, this would just exacerbate the problem and the underlying hiss is going to become more apparent. For most of us YouTubers and podcasters, I really wouldn't recommend going more than 12 inches away from the microphone because the majority of us are recording in spare bedrooms that don't sound great, they're not treated well, and we have a lot of background noise going on. And as you get further away from the microphone, all of those flaws, all of those imperfections get significantly more apparent. The big pros of using a microphone a little bit further from your face is number one, it's much less likely to block your face and block your field of view. It's gonna sound much more realistic and natural because very few people are whispering into each other's ears three inches away. It doesn't exhibit that proximity effect and you also get a lot more room to move around. You don't feel claustrophobic and you have a little bit more wiggle room in terms of moving around. But there is one huge con to this miking technique. As you get further from the microphone, all of that unwanted noise is going to seem louder, whether it be room tone, reflections, background noise, air conditioner, keyboard, all of that is going to come across louder in relation to your voice. First up, we have the studio condenser or large diaphragm condenser. For this example, I'm using the Lewitt LCT 440 about 12 inches away from my mouth. And here is how this microphone sounds in this kind of use case. Next, we have a cardioid small diaphragm condenser. For this example, I'm using the SE Electronics SE8. The mic is about 12 inches from my mouth, so just at the edge of what I'm comfortable miking at and here's how it sounds in this room right next to a desk and a computer monitor and lastly for the shotgun microphone option i am using the deity s mic 2 it's set up about 15 inches away from me so outside of what i'm comfortable with but i wanted to provide a little bit more of an extreme example so you can hear what kind of flaws might be introduced once you get outside of about 12 inches with the mic distance. And just a quick side note and demo here, if you aren't sat directly at a desk with a computer monitor in front of you, or right in front of a wall, you can get a much better sound out of an overhead mic that's a couple inches away, or an omnidirectional lav mic, because the mics aren't gonna be picking up as much reflection and reverb of your voice off of those surfaces. Sur service surfaces, not services, surfaces. <laughs> What if you want your microphone completely out of frame? For that, I would recommend going with a shotgun microphone or a small diaphragm condenser. You could argue a lav mic could achieve the same thing, but as far as getting the best sound, a shotgun mic or an SDC is going to sound infinitely better than a lav mic because they are full-sized mics. The pros of using a microphone out of frame are number one, the microphone is out of frame out of frame, out of mind. Two, it is going to sound a bit more natural than close miking because again, very few people are talking three inches away from somebody's ear. You hear a bit of the room. It just sounds a bit more realistic. But then as far as the cons of using a microphone out of frame, because the mic ends up further from your mouth, that's gonna make the unwanted noises sound louder in relationship to your voice. I'm talking room tone, reverb, and background noise. And unless you have a professional boom operator who is moving the microphone along with you, your microphone is gonna end up static, and if you move off axis at all, it becomes extremely apparent and just sounds bad. For the samples here, we'll start with the shotgun microphone option, and again, I'm using the Deity S Mic 2. I'm using an overhead miking position about 12 to 13 inches from my mouth, and here is how it sounds in this kind of situation. 
And for the small diaphragm condenser option, I am using the Neumann, hello Neumann KM185, which is a hypercardioid small diaphragm condenser. I was able to get the microphone to be about nine to 10 inches away from my mouth. And here is how this option sounds in this kind of setup. And just because I said that you might be able to argue that a lavalier microphone fits in this category, I'm including a quick demo. I have the Sennheiser ME2 clipped to the collar of my shirt. Not a great position, but very common. This is how an Omni lav mic sounds in this kind of situation. It's gonna pick up a lot of the room because it is omnidirectional. And finally, what if you move around a lot while you're recording? I think the best options here would be a handheld microphone, a lavalier microphone, or a headset microphone. I think the best sounding option is going to be the handheld mic, and it's also a ton of fun just pretending like you're a stand-up comedian. What's the deal with all these microphones? I absolutely love that. The pros of using a handheld microphone in this situation, as I already mentioned, is you're getting a better sound quality than the alternatives, and you also have the freedom to move around a little bit and pretend that you are more important than you might be. Or maybe that's just what I do. The cons are you are hand holding it. It is difficult to have good microphone technique. And if you're not careful, handling noise can become an issue. The second option is a lavalier microphone. And to my ears, it sounds significantly worse, but it can be incredibly convenient if you just want to clip the mic onto your body and not have to worry about it. The pros here, the microphone moves with your body as you turn around. Also, you just don't have to think about it at all because it is just clipped to you. You clip it on, you're done. The cons, you can still go off axis unless you clip the microphone to the bill of your cap so it moves with the turns of your head. I think the sound quality of lavalier microphones is pretty trash compared to full-sized microphones, and most lav microphones are omnidirectional, which means they pick up sound all the way around the mic capsule, so it is going to pick up all the room noise going on around you. And the last option is a headset microphone, and this is the actual headset I use at my day job every single day. The pros here, it is easy to set up, it is easy to use, the microphone is in a constant position. As you move around, the microphone follows you, you don't have to think about it, and the microphone also has a great signal to background noise ratio. But then as far as the cons of headset microphones, I really think it just comes down to the sound quality. They don't sound that good compared to full-sized microphones. So if you're getting one of these expecting to sound like an SM7B, a Lewitt 440, a U87, it ain't going to do that. It's going to sound like a headset microphone. But for voice calls, work calls, anything like that, I think it's more than sufficient. In the next video, we're going to be covering which polar pattern is right for you. And that video is linked directly beneath me as well as in the description.